Hello, hello. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Good evening, and uh, good evening, welcome, teacher. Good hey there. Um, so here we are once again on a um, tu yeah, Tuesday, and uh, I hope that we are ready to continue working, to continue learning, and to continue. Um, hello, good evening. Hey there, good evening. And to continue uh, distributing knowledge, you know, among our among us. Now, uh, for this evening, the things we're going to be covering are going to be mainly uh, related to modifiers. But what do we mean when we talk about modifiers? Well, a modifier is simply said an adjective. So that's what we can understand and what we what we will understand when we talk about um, these modifiers. Um, modifiers come in different shapes, in different uh, kinds, and all we need to do is learn how to place them when we are when you know using few or well from two and ahead of them that you use in a sentence. You have to know where to place each uh, each one of them. Therefore, that's basically what we're going to be working on this evening, uh, learning on how or what order are we going to give um, to some of the modifiers. And uh, well, we also have that little thing still pending from, um, from a couple of days ago, you know, the section B or the uh, exercise B. So we're gonna do that. I think it's gonna be the first activity that we develop um, before we get, you know, into, into more details about the, um, the rest of the structure of the night. But the main thing is going to be um, talking about these modifiers and also creating some examples and uh, seeing how they are um, placed on, on regular sentences. But now, before we get to that, um, this evening, I feel like I would like to answer one of those questions. And uh, I think I think I have never asked you guys this specific question. Because one thing is to ask in a superficial way, you know, and the one that I'm going to ask be asking you today is one that goes a little bit deeper, one that is, uh, you know, trying to find more details. And you're going to know what I mean as soon as you hear the question. If you don't get it, if you don't understand what I mean by the question, then just um, I'll let you know. I'll let you know what I'm looking for. Now, the question is basically... Uh, oh, okay. Well, the question is, how do you feel? Okay. Now, understand there's a difference between asking, how are you? And how do you feel? So the question for this evening is going to be that one. How do you feel? You know that sometimes it's important for us to be heard by other people. So maybe some of us are not like that. Maybe some of us are just the kind of people who just prefers to, um, to keep our feelings for ourselves. But if you want to share how you're feeling lately, what, uh, what is your state of being in the last couple of days? Well, you have a chance here. You have a chance of, um, you know, sharing with people who... You might not know very close, but they, I, I assure you, they might care about what you have to say. So uh, I think we're going to be getting started with, let me see, Walter. Would you mind kicking this one off? Tell yeah. us, how do you feel? Um, right now, I feel so sleepy. I don't know. Uh, one hour ago, I, I took a shower. I don't know. After I took a shower, all way feel. I don't know, sleepy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um, the last, the last two day, um, um, I had a problem to go to the bed to fall asleep. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that cause to me um, has the day to everything, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes my my behavior is like a child when it's impossible to to sleep very well. Mm -hmm irritate but um today i take a i take a decision uh for example uh don't drink coffee after the fight or close uh, five in the afternoon mm -hmm. um i hope that working in me instead in order to sleep very well today all right yeah. okay 
So yeah, the the thing is that we have been having problems then to fall yeah. asleep lately. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. So yeah, it's. I mean, sometimes that happens. You know, maybe we are stressed by something that we don't know. It used to happen to me a lot uh, back in the days when I was uh just starting my job at the university i remember how sometimes i will be like did i did this did i did the other thing am i done with like all my planning am i done with all the things that i had to to have ready and uh i remember i remember sometimes i will stay up super late even yeah. at two at dawn sometimes uh just thinking on like do i have everything ready and the next day i will be sleepy as is it happening to you right now for me honestly today has been one of those rough days uh when i'm just coming and going doing many things and uh basically since 2 30 after i finished the first class of the day because now i'm teaching from one to two uh so after i finished that, that class i felt so sleepy honestly <laughs> i hope i'm not gonna fall asleep right now because yeah my sister was even asking me right now, do you want a coffee? And I was like, no, remember coffee actually t makes me more sleepy. So it's like, it's not the solution for me. Um, but yeah, <laughs> sometimes we just feel so exhausted that, you know, it happens. So it's understandable. Yeah, yeah but it's going to be nine in a few minutes. It always yeah. happens. So it's going to be nine in a few minutes and you will be able, able to go to sleep. Okay, yeah. great. Now yes. let's hear from... Uh, Jose Luis, how about you, Jose Luis? How do you feel lately? Um, well, I think I feel um, relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because this day was very, um, how can I say? Mm -hmm. a, a very normal day. And I don't know, I just feel relaxed right now. Before this class, I was um, finishing some homework. Mm -hmm. And this is like my, uh, it maybe it sounds uh, strange, but this is like my rest okay. of all the university activities. Yeah, because it's a little bit of a more relaxed environment. So it's, it's nice, you know, it's understandable that you say that because it's not as stressful or as demanding as a university class will be. So it's, it's totally understandable that you feel that way. And uh, great, you know, it's also great that you feel relaxed and uh, sometimes we have to take those chances. Whenever we feel like relaxed, it's, it's, it's our duty to take those chances because there are going to be times when you when don't feel like that. So right now, uh, make the most out of it. If you have a chance to like uh, go to bed quickly after the class, try it because when you go to bed, when you feel like this, when you feel relaxed, I think it's one of the best, uh, rest that one can get at least it happens to me almost all the time when I feel relaxed it's like I try to go to bed ASAP because that way I'll feel um, even better in the morning but yeah great good to know all right um, all right understood Roberto how about the case of uh, Luis Luis Alonso how do you well, feel Luis how do you feel lately well um this day uh, I am looking forward to dinner and a good cup of coffee because this day is very hard. Um today um a cold girl bird. Oh really uh, family was born. Okay, and, that yes. is great. And, great news. And we will call her Fortune, Fortuna. Okay. <laughs> Because and she had to be happy to give birth, and it was very hard to act as a paramedic <laughs> because uh, wow, the day is 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 very 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 busy, very busy. Because um, I would say um, the calf came uh, from. The cow came from the um, las um, las patas, the the the, the legs, the, the lower, yeah, the, the, the lower, the, the, yeah, lower, the lower set of, uh -huh, the lower and not leg. from the hand, which is normal. Mm -hmm. um, but 
at the end of the the, the part is it's okay but today uh, at this time I want to go to sleep. <laughs> so it's because basically like we are this, all ready to go to sleep so far. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, let's hear from Jancy. How about you, Jancy? How do you feel lately? Uh, how, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> I feel tired. Okay. I feel tired. Yes, I do uh, many things. Uh, I don't know. Uh, cook and go to buy for eat for make for make meal. Uh, yes, for food. Yeah, it's for many meal. things. Yes. For the news, <laughs> and also the the telephone, the telephone, yes, um, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's a banana. It's a day a banana. <laughs> okay, so today was bananas. <laughs> nice. Yes. I'm applying, I'm applying yes. previous knowledge. There we go. So today was bananas. Yes. All right. So yeah, it went south apparently. <laughs> okay. Now let's see if we can get any any positive energy from uh, Ailey. How about you, Ailey? How do you feel? Hello there. Okay, seems like probably your microphone might not be working because I know I cannot hear you well, or I mean, I cannot hear you at all. Well, uh, maybe we can try with uh, Helen now. How about you, Helen? How do you feel? You know, but well, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so tell me. Well, tell us. Well, lately, I have been feeling. I mean, um, I've been like kind of stressful, I guess, mm -hmm. because of my job and mostly of the traffic i mean it feels like every day i gotta um get up like earlier and earlier every day and it's, it's the same of, yeah it is the same but overall it has been a really good time at the end i think i have a good job i have a good to study and I'm well, <laughs> but okay. I'm part of, of the traffic. I mean, things okay. have been pretty good. All right, great, very good. Um, yeah, it's nice that even though we are going through si to hard situations or situations that are not as convenient as one would like. Uh, you know, we give it a, a good face. We try to just uh, be the best we can and uh, just to stay relaxed. Um, so yeah. Okay, uh, I feel sick, headaches, and body pain. Okay, get, go check that out or take some pills or something because, yeah, that's that's bad if you uh, just let it be. Or sometimes, you know, with a good night of sleep, you can also get better. So hopefully you get better soon, Ailey. All right, uh, but I was saying, it's it's good if we give it our best face to, to harsh situations. In my case, for example, if I am allowed to share, in the last few days, I told you guys about uh, my girlfriend's grandma, that, that the fact that she passed. And well, in, in um, Catholic families, you know, there is this tradition that we have nine days of, of rezos. So yeah, that's basically what we have been doing in the last few days. Um, they have been uh, carrying out said activity. And what, since Friday, well, actually she, since she passed, I have been coming and going like all the time for example these classes uh last week it was three nights in a row where i was basically just in a rush to come i mean to be on time to teach the classes so it was it was very hard because i was almost running you know to get to you guys on time um the last three days has been basically the same like i have to run from her her grandpa's uh home to here because these situations are like that. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of work. And uh, yeah, we have been trying to give it our best because this is the best we can do now for her. 
and it's kind of rough. Uh, but hopefully from tomorrow on, I'll feel be I'll feel better because I'll have more time to rest. Because yeah, the nine days are over, and those are basically the the busiest days. And uh, now we can we all can um, rest a bit, you know. But yeah, that is kind of what has been going on. If uh, by some point I haven't been as present or if you guys notice that I get distracted easily is because I'm not sleeping well. The last week, basically, I haven't been able to sleep my best. Um, but hopefully from tomorrow on or from tonight on, I'll be able to. But anyway, uh, how about the case of uh, Sandra? How about you, Sandra? How do you feel lately? Hello, teacher. Very happy. <laughs> you feel happy? Yes, of course. Okay. Can we know why? Because I have finished my my <laughs> the my platform, platform work. finally. <laughs> yeah. uh, someone was was sent by God as ah, a <laughs> Okay, that's great. <laughs> yes, I I will not say the name of that oh, okay. of that angel, right? Okay. <laughs> Was it? Ah, she's smiling. I think it was Jancy. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of easy to tell. Jancy se rió ahí, perdió. A mí no se me va, a mí no me, a mí no se me van esas cosas. Okay. So yeah, it was, yeah, a mí, no, a, mí, a mí no se me va. Miren, yo les digo, en la U siempre los bichos cuando yo les hacía parciales, pasó lo porque como algunos eran incluso mayores que a mí. Entonces ellos se ponían ahí como de que, no, que vamos a copiar. Y yo, ay, papá, yo acabo de salir. Les decía, yo, yo sé cómo se copia. Yo veía a mis compañeros, o sea, cómo me van a, se van a poner a decirme a mí que, que me van a pasar copia. Entonces, y una vez les puse ese reto. Les dije, traigan tanta copia como puedan. El método que se les ocurra, tráiganlo. Ah, pues, y supuestamente la mayoría les encontré la copia, según lo que me dijeron ellos, ¿verdad? Como yo generaba como confianza, entonces me dijeron, no, hombre, usted, usted, teacher, era copión, quizás, me dijeron, porque a todos nos notó la copia. Yo, no, el punto es que como yo me sentaba atrás en los, en, la, en los laboratorios o parciales, yo veía lo que mis compañeros hacían. A mí, if I'm to be honest, I have copied, yes, but I, I don't like that, you know. For example, I remember this time when I was taking my pies, Uh, for many of you, maybe pies was not a problem, was something that you didn't have to worry about. In my case, I did. Um, and uh, I remember that some teachers, they get the results of the test. I mean, they know what are the right answers. And as I was one of those students that was kind of uh, active, you know, in classes, I remember my social studies teacher She came to me and she handed me one paper and she was like, here, Segovia, here you go. So here are the answers. And I didn't use it. I felt like I was going to feel guilty. And I was like, nah, I want to give it my best. I want to try myself out and see if I can do it. Um, now, at the end of it, I kind of disappointed myself with my performance because I, I only got uh, 4.9 or something. <laughs> But I was like, at least it's my grade because the rest of my classmates, they all copied. They all got the copy and they were like, you know, I'm going to take, take my chances. And yeah, many of them <laughs> got like sevens or eights or, or, or sixes. But in my case, I was like, no, nah, I was left behind. I was the third place in my group. But in Pies, I was one of the lowest. But it was because I didn't want to take the copy. I was like, nah, I'm not going to do it. And uh from that point on i just felt like that now some people thought that i was one of those who liked to copy but it was because i never studied when i was studying english some people even get mad at me when i say that english came to me as an easy subject because some of my, some of my classmates in high school they really struggled with it i used to help him a lot you know because i liked english but yeah it was not something that was going to be challenging so at the university I think if I ever copied, it was in Spanish classes. It was not in English classes. If I ever copied, it was in Spanish classes. Oh. Uh, but, but I remember seeing all my classmates. Like, you know, one of my, my very best friends, she was my, my, my classmate from, I think it was like sixth grade or something. Uh, not the one that I told you the other day. No, la que no entiende las bromas. This is another one. This is actually her cousin. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she was one of the best in the group. 
She was one of those people who will who will spend the night before test studying. She will she was one of those who will memorize everything and be ready for any presentation, any test. And uh, I was just like, nah, did you read anything? I was like, no, I didn't. Did you study? No, I didn't. And at the end, I got like nines or tens sometimes. And they were like, how do you do that? And I'm like, I'm, I mean, English is easy for me. It comes to me as an easy subject. Uh, but yeah, I, I do remember that she was one of the best. <laughs> but apart from being one of the best, she was also one of the best copying. From her, oh. I got <laughs> so many techniques. Because she was always so worried. She was like, no, I have to get the best grades. So in case I forget anything, I have to have my copy ready. So that was well, her. Yeah, she was. Well, teacher, but, but not exactly was a copy because I was, I had already worked on that, of course. I know. <laughs> no, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you did. I'm just, you know, providing the example on how I sometimes get to figure out how or when or where did it uh -huh. come from. And like me, many many of my classmates, they have 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 been yes. have been working very hard. And that's and why they, that's why I'm actually still going to show you guys the answers because I, that's my yeah, answer. you guys yes. you guys may need the answers. That's yeah, my, of course. Yeah, yeah my uh, that friend of mine, I remember one time we were in a grammar class, and the teacher she was very young. She was probably one of the cutest teachers that I ever had, and. Um, but she didn't have a good relationship with girls. She was nice with boys, but not with girls. And uh, one time she figured out that my friend was copying and she found a little paper that she had with many notes in it. And I, I do remember that day so well. I remember her going crazy, going bananas on it. And she was like, no, hmm. teacher, if you ask me the questions, I know all the answers. It's not because I have the copy. I know the answers, but I just had to have the copy because I was going to feel you more secure. And yeah, that was that was quite a scene because I knew she was like that. O sea, era bien característico, especial eso de ella. Que a pesar que estudiaba, que se sabía las cosas, no se sentía segura y siempre andaba copia. Entonces de ella yo aprendí un montón de formas de copiar. Así oh, que, oh. de verdad se los juro, ya hoy ya tiene su familia y todo ella, pero sí, o sea, ella era muy buena, pero a, a pesar de ser muy buena, tenía ese detalle que siempre, siempre tenía alguna copia lista, alguna forma de copiar lista, porque tenía dudas, entonces ella decía, no, yo me tengo que sacar buena nota, porque para eso paga mis papás, decía, ella was like, dude, you don't have to, but okay, so, yeah, as I was saying, people, Ay, Dios santo, no me digan que me va a pedir que recargue esto. Let's see. Hopefully, we're going to get it fast. Yes, there we teacher, go. Teacher, this day, the, the platform did not allow me to work. It didn't work. It really? It took work. me out all the time. All the time. Yeah. I don't know why yeah. they're doing five that. Five minutes and happened. out. Five, to me. Other five minutes out. Yeah. Yes. Out. Yeah. Did, it, did it give you the bad gateway uh, signal? No. A veces da un mensaje de bad gateway. No, yes, no. Yes, bad no. gateway, gateway. Ah. Well, so I, if I, it, I don't see it, but... Uh, if, it ever, if, it, if it ever gives you the 504 uh, error code, which means uh, bad gateway, just reload the page. You know, just reload it. Sí. No vayan al link, no vayan a lo que tengan guardado. Yo, por ejemplo, tengo este, este acceso aquí, ¿verdad? No vayan a eso, sino que solo aquí en, en, en la opción de recargar, solo ahí recarguenlo. O sea, solo le dan recargar. No abran otra pestaña y lo abran de nuevo porque va a pasar lo mismo. Y siempre les va a seguir dando bad gateway. Me, y, 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 a mí me, 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 excuse me, me, me pasó igual, so, pero, pero siempre me mandaba que me saliera. Hmm. A mí también. Y, y, volvía, y volvía a recargar y todo lo que ya había hecho me lo borró. Yes, that's true. That's true. Is that toxic? Yes. Ahorita la, 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 la sí. Yeah. Sí. In my case, I can enter on the platform. Sí, tiene como un mes ahorita que está así. Porque yo antes de empezar a más cursos, yo me puse a revisar un día. Entonces, si lo mismo me pasaba, ya hace días so, está así. It's crazy. I don't know, teacher, but um, I check my, my indications. Los son. Uh -huh. Teacher, uh, <laughs> y dice de que solo estoy como asistente, no tengo derecho a un certificado al terminar. Y eso como... Um, a ver, la muchacha encargada del grupo, en este caso, uh -huh. ella es nueva, se, de, déjame ver cómo es que se llama, aquí está, y a, a ella es, sería a quien, a quien le puede escribir para que resuelva eso directamente, es, ah, okay. no, no, Córdoba, 
Mm, podría ser, ah, pero... Que uh -huh. Eso que dijo el compañero de, de que le parece que está como asistente. A mí me parecía también los cursos anteriores porque tomé dos de marketing en, en diciembre uh -huh. y también parecía eso, pero explicaron que en la plataforma aparece ese mensaje, pero siempre dan el diploma. Y ah, cabal, al final de esos cursos me lo dieron siempre. Ah, Al correo okay. mandan el, el documento. Eso sí. Pero okay. si no, ¿dónde es? Pero ahora es virtual only. Yeah, it happens when you uh, finish the platform early. Mm, really? Okay. Yeah. It oh, happens sorry, to me. Sorry, the Sandra. Module, the, the... <laughs> so don't hurry up too much. <laughs> don't push it too fast. <laughs> yeah, I don't have her 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 uh let me see. She called me yes. In the Flor no necesariamente es la encargada del todo ahorita, tampoco eh, la señorita Córdoba. Ella aquí mm. siempre, siempre al principio de las clases, fíjense, como en los ocho minutos de la clase entra alguien. Sí. Pero no sé qué sí. se me... Teacher, pero no es la que nos manda ahí cuando nos hemos atrasado en la plataforma. Mm -hmm. No, no ella es como la, la encargada regaño, de los regaños. Ajá, ella es la de los regaños. <risa> Esa muchacha, el sí. número de ella es 72, 79, 40, 67. Let me see. A ver, es que no sé qué pasó porque aquí estaba ayer. <risa> 72, 72. No, she's not. No, she's 72. Not. Ah, no, está en el otro grupo. Es cierto, es oh. en el grupo de intermedio que tengo donde está ella. Oh. Sí. Ya, yeah, porque con Córdoba, Córdoba lo que más hace es cuestiones como administrativas, pero it's Victoria Mirón, ese es el nombre. Ella es la encargada ahorita del grupo. Pero si no, sí, si, o sea, porque aparentemente Victoria no está en el grupo, solamente quizás está encargada de monitorearme a mí. Este puede ser una opción con Flor. O sea, si ustedes se quieren asegurar, ¿verdad? Pero normalmente mm. es cierto, los, los diplomas siempre se los dan. O sea, al final de cuentas sí. siempre se los dan. Pero ah, okay. si ustedes tienen alguna duda, puede ser quizás con, con Flor una buena opción, porque ella es casi como el eje central, digamos, de todo. O sea... En Gmail, lo, en el correo lo envían, mister. Ajá. Sí. Yes. Sí, pero en caso que, o sea, que a lo, a aquellos que tienen duda, ¿verdad? Y no les pase. Sure. Sí, sí, dígame. Yo, cuando, la primera vez que me salió ese mensaje en el, en los, en la, en el, en el curso, en la plataforma, le pregunté a Jason Bautista. Ajá. Uh -huh. Él me contestó que, que siempre sale eso al inicio del, del, del curso o cuando está en el curso, pero al final siempre, siempre le, le sale la opción de imprimir el, el, el diploma. El diploma, el uh -huh. certificado uh -huh. de participación. Sí. Uh -huh. Sí, al final siempre aparece. Y como de todas maneras, lo que una vez les dije yo, el más importante es el último que ustedes van a hacer. O sea, el más importante ya es el último. Estos obviamente cuentan, ¿verdad? Pero Ajá. ya el, el, el más, más pesado, pues es el último que, que tienen que sí. sacar ustedes. ¿Sí? Y en el intermedio módulo 3, no, en el, no, en el preavanzado módulo 3 nos dieron manual. En este de avanzado no hay. ¿Manual de qué? Era manual, un manual como un libro. Es manual del estudiante. A mí no me pasa nada de eso. <risa> en los primeros cursos sí nos daban manual. Yeah. Nos Yo creo que un... ya en avanzado quizás ya, ¿no? Supongo. Y los que se portan mal también. Ajá, porque sí. conozco de un grupo mm. que, que se porta mal y, 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 les, y les envían eso. Bueno. Ajá. Sí, porque este año, este, perdón, este mes, otro reclamo que he tenido con, lo, con el grupo de intermedio, acá cada rato me dicen, o sea, y me toca siempre en las clases estar recordando, esta es la semana, cómo la van a trabajar, así es como tienen que ir y todo, porque ellos están como medio perdidos, dicen, en cuanto a las fechas, o sea, por la situación, ¿verdad?, del de trabajo de los viernes y todo eso, entonces están medio, medio desubicados. Ah, pues, pero es una situación que, pues, está fuera de nuestro control, ¿verdad?, como facilitadores, y que el detalle es que ellos lo que están buscando es simplemente terminar dentro del límite del mes, y pues por eso, ¿verdad?, se hizo eso. Pero ustedes no han tenido problema con eso, o sea, ustedes ya, varios ya terminaron, los demás me imagino que ya están a punto de... Pero bueno, vamos a hacer esto rápido porque si no después queda Una consulta tiempo. última, teacher. Sí. Okay. En la charla informativa yo pregunté acerca del de curso TOEIC. Ajá. Y dijeron que nuestra beca avanza, abarcaba todavía hasta curso TOEIC después de avanzado módulo 3. Uh -huh. ¿Es cierto o no es cierto? No sé. Honestamente, como les digo, yo de muchas cosas así administrativas, de hasta dónde llegan ustedes, 
miren, yo estoy ahí, pero el detalle es que como hay muchas cosas, eso va por olas, ¿verdad? Ajá. Entonces, eh, usualmente tienen grupos separados. En mi caso, uh -huh. o sea, mi cobertura es estas clases. Uh -huh. Entonces, como yo no estoy necesariamente habilitado para dar clases ni, al, ni a la, al programa de inglés para el trabajo, que es un programa similar uh -huh. a este, pero um, aquel es de dos horas, las clases son mucho más largas, son clases de dos horas de una vez. Eh, no sé cómo funciona, digamos, todo lo de inglés para el trabajo. Tampoco sé cómo funciona lo de marketing, tampoco sé cómo funciona Excel. O sea, yo uh -huh. sé que son algunos de los cursos que ellos tienen, uh -huh. pero ellos solo nos explican lo que necesitamos saber. Así como, ajá, ¿verdad? Esto es lo que ustedes van okay. a hacer, esta es su labor, y esto es lo que ustedes tienen que hacer. De ahí para allá, lo que siempre nos indican es que contacten a alguno de los, de los encargados, alguno de los administradores, y ellos uh -huh. les pueden facilitar mejor información. O sea, porque okay. así no, no, se supone pues, que ellos no se complican, porque, digamos, así como yo pudiese leer toda la información y estar bien informado, y les diera la información correcta, podría también yo leer algo y equivocarme y les doy la información incorrecta. Uh -huh. Entonces, y luego ustedes llegan y le dicen, ah, no, el teacher dijo que sí, que ustedes cubren uh -huh. el TOEIC. Entonces, y yo simplemente no lo haya leído bien, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Entonces, para evitarse esos contratiempos, es que ellos mejor dicen, cuando les hagan preguntas así, mándenos para nosotros. Así que okay. mejor que cuestionen con ellos. Uh -huh. um, pero sí, porque también creo que hay preparación de TOEFL con esta gente. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Creo. One, two, three. Uh -huh. Sí, pero sí. ¿ustedes, es están, ¿Ustedes están con deseo de, de, de hacer el examen? Yo sí. Ah, oh, yes. 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 Toic, yes. Toic o TOEFL? Yes. yes. Uh, TOEIC. Ok. Uh -huh. Ok. No, porque, o sea, lo del TOEFL, en mi caso, yo sí, eh, digamos, ya he tenido la oportunidad de dar alguna que otra asesoría. Obviamente no puedo hacerlo aquí, ¿verdad? Así que, ajá. O sea, pero es algo... Aparte, digamos, I mean, if you want to know, you can, you know, hit me up later. Pero, ajá, es algo que, es aparte. Pero eh, es importante, o sea, a la hora de querer medir, digamos, el nivel que uno tiene. Y mm -hmm. algunas personas, porque pues, también lo necesitan, ¿verdad? Para poder um, presentar, digamos, la acreditación. O sea, y presentar que, que están preparados. Así que, ajá. Pero igual, if, you, if it's your dream you know, to, to take any of those tests. The TOEIC, I have never taken it. TOEFL, well... I did I, it at the American Embassy. What? I did TOEIC at the American Embassy. Oh, really? Yes. This, they, they say TOEIC is a very technical test. Like, it, it measures yes. a lot of, like, technical areas of the, of the language. Yes. I got only 85%. Really? Yeah. But that's high, isn't it? A little bit. A yeah, little bit. 85 is good. Yeah, 85. Yeah, in and my TOEFL case... TOEIC. TOEIC. Uh, there are some points. The I don't one, know how the, it the, works. The, 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 the scale... To, to 100. The sc think... No, that's for, uh, for TOEFL IBT. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's it's... for TOEFL IBT, where you even do some speaking, you do writing, uh, and that's the one that goes from 0 to 100. TOEIC goes from like 500 to 800 something, I think. Yeah. Uh-huh. TOEIC yeah. goes from, uh, from that. Um, TOEFL goes from 350 something to 600. Wait, no, it's higher. It's 360 something to um, 670 or 72. Teacher. Yes. How long are there? The, the tests? Yes. Well, uh, TOEFL, which is the one that I have experience with, I was about to tell you, with TOEFL, my grade for TOEFL is 557. So it's only 13 points away from, from being perfect. I only got um, five questions wrong. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's TOEFL. My God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. In my first run, you know, I didn't know. That's something you guys have to know about me. I have never been one of those people who like to read the instructions when it comes to tests. Um, I didn't know how many questions one had, uh, like, right. And uh, my best friend, the one that I told you the other day that doesn't get jokes, one time we were at the library. I mean, at the, uh, yeah, at the library in the university. And she was looking at the TOEFL book. And she asked me, like, Segovia, what is your score? And I told, you, I told her that it was 620. Then she started looking through 
at that time, at that time it was no six thirty three. Yeah, back then it was six thirty three. Uh, she was looking through the through the pages and she found out that I only got that time the first time I took the TOEFL, I only got ten questions wrong. Uh, this time I took it just because I wanted to, and I only had five questions wrong. And with TOEFL, Joaquin, uh, yes. it's fifty questions of the listening skill, forty mm -hmm. questions related to grammar. <laughs> And 50 questions related to reading. So it's it's 140 questions. Mm, it's very long. 140 questions. It normally takes between an hour and a half to two hours. It's it's the top, you know. It's an hour and a half to two hours. Because for the first uh, section for listening, you normally will spend around 40 minutes on listening. Then you have a timer. The timer goes down from 25 minutes. Um, to zero, of course, in grammar. Uh, and for reading, you have 55 minutes. So that's that's the, the amount of time you have. Um, my favorite skill is grammar. In grammar, I think, well, yeah, that's my favorite because I almost always get them all right. In reading is the one that I sometimes lack. I get uh, around five wrong. So yeah, you... That's where I get my wrong answers. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a, a thing that takes some work because many people, for example, in my university, uh, there are tons and tons of people who are not able of like um, approving said test. Um, so yeah, they, you know, sadly have not had the chance to graduate from, from, from college because of the test. Um, so yeah, for, for many people, it's a very important thing, you know, to... Um, to pass the TOEFL. So yeah, uh, TOEIC, as I mentioned, I don't know too much about it. I have never taken the test. I only know that it's very technical. I know that it relates to things like um, uh, traveling, you know, um, maybe hotels, so many things that are technical. Sandra might give you more details about uh, it. About ge <laughs> geographic too. Okay, so geography, so it, it goes, you know, to, to many things. TOEFL yeah. does basically the same. On the reading section, TOEFL goes to geography, history, uh, astronomy, I don't know, even some religious topics. Mm -hmm. But normally it's about history and uh, geology. And, and um, what is the other thing? H science and mm -hmm. literature. So those will be the main points, you know, that the TOEFL is about. Yes. yes. General history in, the, in, in this talk. <sighs> the thing is that it's normally built up by five different readings. And each reading can be about a different topic or is going to be about a different topic. For example, uh, let's say that there is going to be one reading about the rail system in the U.S. So it's four paragraphs of like, what, 10 to 12 lines? And uh, you read about it, then you have to answer it about eight to 10 questions about it. Then there are some readings that are relatively short. There is one about frogs. I like that one because it's very short. Um, so it's about frogs, about every kind of frog that uh, is, you know, in nature. And uh, that is like like 12 lines uh, completely. You know, it's only, only 12 lines. Uh, another topic can be... Um, some American tribes, that's basically related to American history. So American tribes. Another one can be about how humans came to be part of the American continent. You know, humans travel through the, the Tibet and, and, and all those, those places, and they came down through Alaska, Canada, and then uh, North America, and that's how humans got here. Um, others can be related to geography, for example, relating to um, how continents started dividing apart. So yeah, many things. I actually have learned so many things from the TOEFL readings because they can be about as wild as you can imagine of topics. Okay. Um, there was one topic also about um, timber. It's about, yeah, about timber and, and the export of timber during the colonial times to Europe. From, from the US to Europe. Um, the competition between uh, the railroad and uh, the steamboat. So many things, you see. 
O sea, y todo eso son cosas que uno no conoce, porque ¿qué, se, qué saben ustedes acerca de, de, del sistema de rieles o del sistema de trenes y los, los eh, barcos a vapor en Estados Unidos? O sea, y de eso trata, tratan las lecturas. ¿Cómo se dan lecturas? On the, on the grammar section, you may find, for example, uh, things related to American presidents, things related to fashion, things related to American universities. So, Basically anything. Coins too. What? Sorry. Coins. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a it's a crazy test. It is <laughs> about everything basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you ever take it, you know you have to be well prepared. You have to be ready for for some wild things. En estos días, de hecho, lo pueden tomar en línea. O sea, todavía está disponible para tomar en línea el test. Um, la otra forma, pues, es presencial, ¿verdad? Con el, con el Centro Cultural Salvadoreño Americano. Es básicamente el único sí. autorizado en el país para, para poder... Eh, ¿Cómo se llama? Para poder evaluar eh, siguiendo, ¿verdad? Esos, esos exámenes. Ambos, tanto TOEFL como TOEIC. Aunque entiendo que TOEIC hay algunas empresas privadas, algunas empresas, o sea, como más aparte del, del centro cultural, que también pueden evaluar. No estoy seguro, pero he escuchado eso. Um, sí. Pero sí, el TOEFL sí es solamente con el, con el, con el um, ¿cómo se llama? CCSA. Uh -huh. Ok. Thank you, teacher. Teacher, eh, ¿sabe qué? Me dijeron de que <coughs> si, si queremos ser certificados eh, internacionalmente, tenemos que tomar el TOEFL con... con inglés corporativo. ¿De veras? Ajá. Uh -huh. Pero, o sea, ¿deben tomarlo? Me refiero, de, de, perdón, ¿se refiere a deben pasarlo? O... Ah. Oh. Uh -huh. Wow, well, that's what the, the, the girls told to me. Told me, told me. Well, okay. if you ever have the need, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you ever have the need, hit me up. Uh, anyway, so, uh, right now, guys, uh, después de todo eso, vamos a ver esto, sí, vamos a hacerlo rápido. So, in this case, on this section, see, for Luis and the rest of people who wanted to get to, uh, to talk about this, we have the instructions. Instruction is very simple. Combine, combine the sentences using defining and non-defining relative classes. Remember to use capital letters and periods. So, we have here two different sentences. Bulgaria is a small country. Bulgaria is cheap to travel in by bus. So we have that the final sentence is Bulgaria is a small country. Um, sorry, is a small country uh, that. Yeah, that it's is a small country that is cheap to travel by bus. That is it. Bulgaria is a small country that is cheap to travel by bus. So in this case, what you guys will have to do is basically just place uh, the defining class. No. It would be a non-defining. Yeah, a non No, no, no. Defining, it would be a de defining, defining. Yeah, defining clause. Defining clause. Uh, here, just take take away the period that divides both sentences, and also take away the noun Bulgaria, and you will have the sentence. You know, Bulgaria is a yeah. small country that is cheap to travel by bus. So that is the first one. Uh, next one is Florence is easy to navigate on foot. Florence is a small city. We have that the final score is going to be Florence is a small city that is easy to navigate on foot. So what you will do is in this occasion, um, as the fact that Florence is a small city will be more relevant to, this, to the conversation or more relevant to the whole meaning of the sentence, you will place that at the beginning of the sentence. And that is the reason why sometimes you're going to have to move you know, parts of the sentence Um, either to the end or to the to the first section. So here you do that. You go to put Florence is a small city first, and then you add the fact uh, that it is easy to navigate on foot. Um, because if you say first, Florence is uh, is easy to navigate on foot, that is a small city. It will not make sense. So for mm -hmm. the uh, for the sentence to make sense, you have to place the most relevant information at the beginning. And in this occasion, it's going to be that Florence is a small city. Then the rest of it is only going to be a description about it. Um, so here, once again, it's going to be a defining relative class. Okay, so for this one, it's also a defining relative class. Then we have, my hometown is a popular tourist destination. My hometown gets crowded in summer. 
Now, here we have it. Uh, my hometown, which is a popular tourist destination that's going to be between comas, uh, gets crowded in, in summer. So what is important about this sentence? It's only that my hometown gets crowded in summer. The fact that it's a famous or a popular tourist destination is just an extra, you know, to the description. What you're saying is that your hometown gets crowded. That's the part that is important. That's the part that you might be talking about. But the rest of it, it's only a description for you to clarify or to give a reason for your hometown to become crowded. But it's not like the, the huge, um, you know, idea or the huge section of, of the sentence. Now, number four, Istanbul has great shopping. Istanbul is uh, the home of the Grand Bazaar. Now, uh, here we have it. What do you think is going to be the main section to this question? Do you, to this sentence, sorry. Do you think it's going to be the first one or the second one? What is the most important section of this sentence? The second. The, the, the first. second one. Yeah, because, uh, well, I would say it's the second one because here we, we might be talking about... Uh, landscapes or places to highlight in a city and therefore it will be this one because the fact that it has great shopping eh, i don't think that's to be one of you know one topic that is too relevant in a conversation and that's what you have to analyze when you pick whether it's going to be a defining or a non-defining um class in this case i will say that the fact that it has great shopping is non-defining because it doesn't add a lot of relevance to um to a conversation. Now, uh, it might it might if you're talking about economy or Istanbul's economy, maybe then you might find out that the fact that it has great shopping is important to to the conversation. But it's only if the conversation goes that way. Now, how it will be structured is as following. Istanbul, which has, which has great shopping, is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Okay, so Istanbul, which has great shopping, is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Now, the rest, I think it's easy, right? For the first one, you, uh, well, the instruction is read the sentences and then choose the correct order of modifiers. And that's basically what I wanted to, um, to get to talk about today. Uh, so, here we have it. I enjoy vacationing in... Lovely coastal town. Uh, sorry. Esta, aquí le falta un, uh, un artículo. Sí. Aquí debería ser in a lovely coastal town. So mm -hmm. I uh, enjoy vacationing in a lovely coastal town. Sí. Le falta un artículo solo para que sepan, ¿verdad? En una oración completa debería tener un artículo justo después de in. Sí. Mm -hmm. yes. Ok. So, uh, yeah. Coastal lovely town. Doesn't make sense, ¿sí? No. O sea, esto no, no es el orden correcto que debemos utilizar a la hora de colocar, ¿verdad? Adjetivos en una oración. Deberá ser lovely coastal town. First, we describe the thing. Then, we add the place. And then, we add the noun. Then, we have most uh, intimidate me. So, the options we have is big with skyscrapers city. So, it will be most big cities with skyscrapers. Most big cities with skyscrapers intimidate me. So we're going to be referring to first the size, then uh, we're going to add a little bit of the um, the noun. And then as we have um, this conjunction here, which is with, we're going to place the conjunction and then we add the last section, which is going to be uh, a skyscraper. So in this case, the reason why we change the order is because we have a conjunction. Okay, because we have the need to use this conjunction is the reason why we are going to be changing the order in which we place um, the modifiers. Then we have the number three. I'll like to retire in A, and then we have uh, the options are village, mountain, quiet. We will say mountain, quiet, village. Well, for us, for um, Spanish grammar, it will make some sense, okay? It will make some sense. It's not going to make the full sense, but some sense. But in English, it will not. 
In English, the, the, the order of modifiers that will, make, that will make full sense will be, I would like to retire in a quiet mountain village. Okay, so first we describe it, then, I mean, we place the description of it, then we add the location, uh, or in this location, it's gonna be a um, landmark, and then we place the noun, which in this occasion is gonna be the village. Number four, I've always loved, and the options we have is college towns little. So college little towns, once college. again, See, once again, in Ice Spanish, is. it will have a chance to make sense. In Spanish, see? O sea, porque ustedes pueden decir, um, ¿qué sé? Pequeños pueblos universitarios. Y no necesariamente, we will have to have college at the end for it to make sense in Spanish. But in English, it has to be little college towns. Okay, because... Size it, fairs, yes. Yes, because here, what we are talking about is going to be about, about the, town. the town. So the town is the noun, the main noun. So we have to place first the description of the size, then the description of the place, and then the description of the noun. Place then, or, or, or origin? In this case, it's, it's an origin, yeah. Origin. It's an, okay. Yeah, it's an origin. Okay, then we have, when I travel, I try to avoid visiting expensive places. Once again, places yes. will be the noun and expensive it's going to be the adjective or the description that we that we provide yes. about about the places. So yeah, those mm -hmm. are the exercises for uh, for section B. And uh, now we have them already. We're going to go back to this. Okay. Okay. So order of modifiers. A ver, eh, eso es algo que siempre se me hace a mí bien interesante llegar a hablar en cualquier clase, porque de hecho esto es algo muy pesado en sentido de la gramática. Eh, quizás sea uno de los temas más importantes cuando se trata de, digamos, enseñar acerca de la gramática del inglés a alguien que habla español. Porque este es el motivo por el cual las personas que nunca han intentado aprender inglés dicen que el inglés es enredado, que el inglés suena como si fuera al revés. Porque son los adjetivos, o sea, los adjetivos básicamente son aquellos que le dan sazón, ¿verdad? A, a los idiomas. Entonces, y el hecho de que los adjetivos eh, en este idioma, o sea, en el inglés, sean así, sean enredosos o al revés, como podríamos decir, es lo que hace, ¿verdad? Que tengamos como esa, esa noción, esa idea. Entonces, por eso es uno de los temas quizás más, más relevantes. Tenemos entonces, en español... ¿Cómo vamos nosotros a, a utilizar adjetivos? Primero que nada, colocamos el nombre, ¿sí? Y a partir del nombre, a partir del nombre, es que empezamos a mencionar, ¿verdad? Las descripciones, ¿sí? O sea, podemos... El carro decir, azul, yes. Ajá, el carro chiquito azul, ¿sí? O el carro azul chiquito, perdón, el carro azul chiquito. Entonces, o si no, podríamos decir, um, la casa vieja de la esquina. Y todo eso, ¿verdad? Está siendo utilizado como un, una descripción o un adjetivo para esa casa. Now, uh, la locación es algo que sí puede cambiar a la hora que utilizamos esa, ese tipo de cosas. ¿Por qué? Porque al igual que en el caso anterior, que había una conjunction, en este caso va a haber una, um, ¿cómo se llama? Una preposición. Entonces, las preposiciones también están ya fuera, ¿verdad? de la liga de los, de los modifiers. O sea, los modifiers vamos a entender como modifiers simplemente los adjetivos. Entonces, si hay una preposición que puede ser cualquier palabra que nos indique lugar, eh, tiempo o espacio, ese tipo de palabras, o sea, las palabras cortitas como in, on, at, uh, before, after, todas esas son preposiciones de diferentes usos, pero preposiciones. Entonces, cuando hay preposiciones, de ahí en adelante ya se borra, ¿verdad? No vamos a colocar, por ejemplo, en inglés, o sea, si les decía, la casa vieja de la esquina, no voy a decir en inglés, um, what, the old corner house, the old in the corner house, no, sino sería the old house in the corner, ¿sí? ¿Por qué? Porque ahí tengo esa preposición que hace que la parte, es decir, la locación de este lugar quede después, ¿verdad?, del noun. Entonces solamente sería old lo que quedaría antes, por esa preposición. Entonces sería old house in the corner, no sería old in the corner house. Bueno, pero ahora, ya hablando directamente acerca del orden de los modifiers en English, we're going to see that 
For example, the first thing that we're going to place whenever we're going to um, <sighs> drive, you know, uh, uh, a noun, we're going to place a determiner. What are determiners? Well, they inform if the adjective is singular or plural, define or uh, definite or indefinite, uh, next or far. Examples, a car, an apple, the book, the flowers, this man, that woman, these computers, those teachers. Okay, so this is the determiner. That is basically, the determiner in this occasion is going to be the first thing here. See, o sea, esto va a ser el, el a, el an, el the, the, this, that, uh, these, and those. Those are the determiners, okay? No nos vayamos a confundir. Esos son los determiners. Son tanto los artículos como los determiners específicos. O sea, cuando hablamos de determiners, estamos hablando, ¿verdad? Acerca de these, that, these, and those. Okay, entonces, eso sería, ¿sí? Um, so, if you were to, to describe something, you will have to say A, and then start with the description, and at the end, you will place a noun. Aquí el motivo por el cual el ejemplo se presenta así todo raro, no sé por cuál es, porque no deberían incluir nouns, porque eso nos puede confundir, ¿verdad? El hecho de que incluya el noun nos va a confundir. O sea, yo puedo decir, ah, entonces, ¿por qué dice el teacher que, que, que va hasta el final el noun si el noun está justo al lado del determiner? No sé por qué lo hicieron así, pero el determiner eh, solamente será a, an, the, mm, en ambos casos, okay. both of them are the, then we have this, that, these, and those. Esos son los determiners, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, Mr. A blue old car. A blue old car. car. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. A blue old car. So that is a, um, is the right order. So when we use a determiner, then we have an opinion. Now, an adjective explains what you think about something or other people may not agree with you. This is something that we say when we want to, to explain, for example, our point of view on a thing, you know, on an object. Uh, if I think that, uh, let's say that a house is big, mm -hmm. this is the moment when I'm going to mention it, okay? Or, sorry, 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 no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. When, when I think that a, a house is, is, for example, um, old or when i think it's it's cute when i think it's mostly about the looks okay when Beautiful. we when, yeah when we talk about uh the opinion it's mostly about the looks mostly about como the lo looks. Vemos. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes and also our perception of it see o sea, por eso yes. dije, como lo vemos, our perception okay so that's opinion okay so the way we look at it um uh, so how can we say this for example uh, expensive, yeah, expensive. Let's say that well, that's the, the, the sentence that we're starting to build up, expensive. Okay, then the size. The size uh, in an adjective, of course, tells you how big or small something is. For example, large, tiny, normal, or little. Okay, so then we are going to have the size. Expensive, big. Okay, expensive, big. Then we now have two different um, modifiers in this sentence already. Then the age, we are going to add this adjective that tells you how young or old something or someone is. For example, ancient, new, young, old. A ver, el ejemplo que estamos construyendo conste eh, va a sonar bien extraño porque vamos a poner un montón de determiners. Normalmente, perdón, de, de, de modifiers. Normalmente eh, llega a tener una oración Tal vez tres, sí, hasta cuatro todavía podría ser, pero ya más de cuatro modifiers eh, ya suena demasiado raro, ¿verdad? O sea, ya la, 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 o sea, la explicación va a ser demasiado, demasiado específica. Entonces, tres, cuatro modifiers, you're okay. But if you add more, then you are going a little bit too far. Okay, then, so we have uh, an expensive, what was it? Big uh new an expensive bit new okay the shape adjective describes the shape of something examples a square round flat rectangular large, an expensive no, huh? size large size okay shape is forma is in the form mm -hmm. shape yes. Mm -hmm. yes so an expensive big new uh flat no uh circular yeah Round, 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 round. 
round. It will be round. An expensive, big, <laughs> new round. Then the color. The color is an adjective, of course, that describes the color of something. Very simple. Pink, uh, blue, pink, reddish, gray. So we have an expensive, big, uh, sorry, yeah, an expensive, big, new, round, gray. Then we have the origin. The origin adjective describes where something comes from. So when we talk about this, when we talk about the origin, we're going to be refer referring, for example, to where it came from, where something is related to. O sea, el punto en el que se conectan las cosas. Hacia dónde está conectado, de dónde proviene, cuál es eh, el lugar de donde lo vamos a obtener. Pero bueno, el tiempo se acabó, así que mañana lo vamos a terminar de obtener. Sí. Okay. Así que, eh, bueno. So we have section B. Al menos eso ya está fuera de la lista, ¿verdad? Ya tenemos chequeado esa parte. Sí, we have section B. Some of you guys may already finish the platform, which is great. Um, so yes, that is basically what we had for today. Uh, all I have to do now is basically just thank you guys very much for your attention and participation. Aquellos que se estaban durmiendo, you feel free now to go to bed. In my case, I still have to wait to upload the video, but you guys can go to bed already. Um, thank you very thank you, much. Teacher. Thank you very much for your attention. See you tomorrow. Good night, guys. See you tomorrow, everyone. Igual del tipo, ya me dormí, hombre.